chances are you are watching this program via satellite in one way or another, either transmitted directly or indirectly to your television, iPad, laptop or phone. In other words, you're using technology once considered science fiction. Pushing the envelope, technology must keep up with demand. More data, more reliability and real-time connection. Space test and hardware and technology are on the cutting edge of science, often introducing new methods of gathering scientific information. Demonstrator missions are regularly sent up, flying new engineering solutions to prove the hardware in situ, even without a specific goal in mind. Technology goes through a whole development cycle, which we call the seamless chain of innovation. We start from the idea and we work along to develop it through our work in the labs, through the work of industry, and especially of small and medium industries, which are the vectors of innovation. But at the end, you need to prove that it works in the real place, space. And in order to do that, uh, we use this missions that can take the risk of flying unproven technology and demonstrate to the larger missions that they work. Research laboratories focusing on the next generation of space hardware are dotted around the globe. The UK's Space Gateway Harwell campus, the ESA RAL Advanced Manufacturing Laboratory, supports cutting edge research and development. The purpose of the laboratory is basically to assess and pre-screen candidate materials and processes for future space missions. So this will guide ESA as well as the space community in focusing their technology investments in the right area. The lab has extensive on-site testing facilities, such as the ISIS neutron source, the diamond light source synchrotron, and the UK's central laser facility. This year will bring the first launch of a satellite using the small geo platform, Hispasat 36W1. Small Geo, a telecommunications platform accommodating a wide range of payloads and missions, has been developed in Germany in a public-private partnership between ESA, OHP and the operator Hispasat. It indeed, because Hispasat and ESA were able to join forces, that we were able to develop a satellite with such a level of innovation. On the one hand, a, a new platform with a new satellite prime contractor, on the other end, uh, uh, a payload embarking also a high level of innovation. And altogether, this satellite is, uh, is, has been developed, is, being, is going to be flown, and, and we provide uh, very innovative services. So end to end, the, the level of innovation is, uh, is very high, and it, indeed, separately, neither ISPASAT nor ISA would have been able to undertake such a complex development. With the small geo, what we, we have uh, tried to achieve was really to develop a new product in the low end of the telecommunication market. And at the same time, this new product would allow uh, the, a new prime contractor to become a prominent player of the satellite telecommunication market. That's uh, the OHP, which is the prime contractor of this uh, satellite. This is a class of satellites that uh, only have electric propulsion on board, which is a high efficient system that allows achieving important mass savings. So we are able to put in space a satellite with a similar capacity of a full chemical one, but with much lower mass, which means less launcher cost, compatibility with more launch vehicles. And again, this translates in advantages for the operators who have at their disposal more efficient technical solutions for their mission. But it's a very flexible, so it can also be used for other geostationary applications.
Another scheduled event in the telecom area is the launch of EDRSC, expected by the end of the year. EDRSC is also based on the small geo platform and will be the first dedicated satellite for EDRS, the European Data Relay Service. It will be the second element of the Laser Relay Space Data Highway. Low Earth satellites encumbered with line of sight communications can beam their data upward to geosynchronous satellites via laser, which can then transmit the signal to ground stations at any time. The Small Geo program is, is just the first step for OHB. OHB has already sold a number of other telecommunication satellites, and indeed this is the start of a product line that will evolve over time like any other product lines of the other prime contractors operating in the satellite telecom market.